Hello and welcome everybody, I am One Proud Bavarian and we are here with a very personal case. A case in which Mr. Pochard here, or Pochard, Pochard, I think it's Pochard, uh, one of our acquaintances, let's phrase it like that, because he did tutor our youngest son, Frederic, is accused of a crime. Which crime exactly? I am not sure of yet. Probably something counter-revolutionary. As you can see, the revolutionaries want him locked up, the people want him sentenced to death and our family wants an acquittal balancing out all those interests will be incredibly tough but i can tell you this much in reality of course this would be a bit of a mistrial mostly judging by the fact that we know him and have a personal connection to him we are clearly not suited to be the judge in this case however as much as he's not suited to be in the jury we are not suited to be here as a judge and yet we are here Let's first of all take a look at the notebook. Maybe we can see something interesting here. Our reputation is decent, although it could be much better. Our revolutionaries uh, don't feel so hot about us. And the common folk is pretty happy with us. Our influence is nice. Okay, so far so good. Uh, we do have Jean-Marie Roland, the Minister of Internal Affairs. Thanks to his resourceful wife, who controls his career from the shadows, he has gained a position in the government and becomes a prominent member of the Girondins. He does not hide his support for the monarchy, maintaining that it will create a balance between a bloody revolution and the tradition that unites all French generations. Alright. I'm scared. I'll be honest with you. I'm a bit scared of this case because of the whole family dynamic here. But we do unlock more questions in the trial because of yesterday night. Uh, we did do that activity. At the cost of our family liking us. So maybe we can do something here for him. It is compiled by Nathan Desiraf. He's done this in the past as well. I remember this name. Claude Pochard, a 26-year-old vicar and tutor. Son of a cobbler. Believes in enlightenment ideals. After refusing to adjure the civil constitution of the clergy, he was removed from his parish, prohibited from carrying out his duties, and sentenced to banishment. Despite this, he stayed in Paris and continued his work as a tutor, which he started before 1789. Pochard was captured in the streets by fortuitous circumstance. A guard officer present during his trial a few months ago recognized him and didn't hesitate to act. Following an investigation, Pochard was accused of spying and spreading counter-revolutionary propaganda in order to prepare a foreign intervention that would end the revolution. Oh, really? Correspondence with Archbishop Jean Arsène de Breteuil uh, Do you pronounce it Breteuil? Uh, maybe. Was found in a room uh, Pochard had been renting from Marie Grimet. In it, the clergyman asked for information about the unrest and the supporters of the monarchy in hiding. Richet was all, were all, riches were also found. A golden chalice and a reliquary. But that is just... So that is... I don't think he was, like, saving that for himself. He was just, you know, saving church goods that would otherwise go to the revolution. Which I understand is counter-revolutionary, but at the same time, the plundering that went on at the time and it went on later... Uh, that didn't actually really spread to the, to the German lands because the church, everything they lost west of the Rhine... Wait a minute, no, the church was just taken from. Now that I think about it, even in the HRE, the Holy Roman Empire, the church, I believe, was not actually compensated by the revolution or even by Napoleon. Moreover, the director of one of the orf uh, orphanages, Claude Taut, and testified that the tutor would question the law of the revolution in front of the students, stating that it was less important than the laws handed down by God. A letter to Claude Pochard. Where's the letter? No, I want to see the... What is this? Oh, I see. Oh, this was a shit focus then. I regret doing that last night. It just gives us one more mistake. What's the point of that, huh? So he's a parish priest. That is his personality. Uh, he was banished. I'm not gonna do that later. Espionage. That's the accusation. Quite clearly. Church riches. Evidence. A letter from the Archbishop. Evidence? Um, spreading propagan uh, propaganda. Counter-revolution, quite clearly. Also, probably accusation. Then we have banishment, that is cause of events. And the tutor is both, I would argue. No, okay, only this one. Alright, okay, okay, we got all questions. We got the case so far. It's pretty clear with a personal connection. I personally, and I'm telling you this before I know more about the case, you know, as it develops here, as we experience whether or not he was truly involved, maybe he was at the end of the day involved with whatever was going on with uh, King Louis the Sixteenth. but the way I see it, uh, I would rather have prison or acquittal, kind of more prison. Let's take a look at the verdict here. If we acquit him, 
Like, we could handle this, but I would hate it. Prison would be nice. I, I'll be honest with you, prison would be nice, even if our family would hate it. Really depends on where the jury goes. You prison or acquittal. That's that's my point of view right now. Please introduce yourself. Monsieur Le Juge, you know me. State your personal information or there will be consequences. Claude Pochard, Monsieur Le Juge. You stand accused of spying for the counter-revolutionaries and criticizing the existing order. Do you admit to these crimes? I am innocent. The accusation is exaggerated and coming from the ill will of the accusers. Suggesting that the revolutionary government is acting in ill will, typical of a priest. Hmm. He was banished. The accused travels extensively around pa the Paris department. To what end? I don't want to summon the witness yet. I don't even know. We did read about her, didn't we? Marie. Ah, she was the one that rented the room. Yes, I remember. Did the accused celebrate masses despite the ban? Why did he continue teaching instead of leaving France? Uh, it's like this question except the other way around. But you know what? I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna do that first, yeah. Why did the accused continue teaching instead of leaving France? My duty is to help others. If I am unable to help as a priest, I want to at least share some of my knowledge. Your knowledge is Catholic propaganda. I prefer the term Catholic values. Interesting. Um, what do you teach? The caregivers and orphanages only pay for reading and writing lessons. So why did the accused teach children that God's law stands above the... Ugh. Why did the accused teach children that God's law stands above that of the Republic? You spread superstition and counter-revolutionary propaganda. That is a misunderstanding. The children I teach are unable to understand such complicated matters. The accused's explanation further incriminates him. If they are unable to understand the topic, why would he even discuss it at all? The church spreads ignorance and takes our money. I was only answering questions from the director of the orphanage in Gombion. I said that God's law stood above my banishment. It is God's law that prohibits me from leaving the country. I have a duty to help those in need. So, the way he frames it is that he didn't spread it towards the children. He merely brought it up when asked why he was going against the banishment. He believes that he needs to be there for the children instead of being banished. If the glove doesn't fit, you must acquit. Um... Why does he travel all around the Paris Departement? To what end? I teach wherever I can find students. Doing that requires time and effort, I admit. Is that why you received gold from your fellow conspirators abroad? He travels around France to spy on people. The only money I see comes from my student caregivers. It is not all at all immodest. So where did the riches found in your room come from? They were liturgical acc accoutrements. What? Accoutrements? I saved them from the plunder of the church in Campan. I would rather go hungry than sell them. Fanatic. Thief. Paddler of superstition. Somebody mentioned, by the way, that they wish this was in French, so that, like, the the actual uh, dub was in French, but the subtitles were in English. I would love that. I would be totally on board with that. I'm going to call the witness here. Summon the witness Marie Jimet. Citizen. What is your name? Marie Jimet, Monsieur le Juge. Was the witness aware that she was renting a room to an unsworn Catholic priest? Did the accused maintain extensive correspondence? That is actually important. If he maintained extensive correspondence, he may be involved in the plot to get King, si uh, King Louis XVI out of Paris, which is a counter-revolutionary act and which even I will not tolerate. Meaning? Did he receive many letters? I don't remember any letters with his name. Perhaps he had a rich social life? Did he entertain many guests? I don't remember anybody visiting him at all. He wasn't there most of the time anyway. He just used the room to sleep. Where would he go? I don't ask my guests about things like that. Did he ever criticize the revolution and its accomplishments? Once he said that instead of beheading, they could do something about economy and teaching, that the children are hungry and, well, can't read or write. Did he ever question the law? Now that I think about it, maybe he did. One evening he complained that the law didn't work, that a smart person would send all the kids to school, by force if need be. Priests lectured our nation for a thousand years and nothing good came out of it. He's right! They gave us nothing more than hunger and disease. What does the accused have to say? Just what Madame Jimé said. I only wanted decent and universal education for the youngest. Is that really criticizing the revolution? One of its slogan is equality. Yo, that dude deserves freedom and you know it. 
You know he deserves freedom. There's no... There's no way of making this a positive talking point, you know, to get rid of him. The thing is... Right now, I'm in a state where the revolution is going against the judiciary. So as a judge, in-game, I believe that what needs to be done is to keep the judiciary, uh, judiciary alive. However, the people, whatever they do, no matter how many windows they shatter, no matter, no matter into how many clashes they get with the guards, the people are less of a threat than the counter-revolution. Now, had this man been with the monarchists in active support in that case I would have had him sentenced but as it stands he didn't actually do anything he didn't spread his beliefs among the children let's see if there's any interesting question here despite already you know why did the accused stay in France no what information did the accused manage to convey to Arch I want to ask this actually what stipend does the accused receive as a teacher? No, no, no. We're gonna we're gonna look at this. What information did the accused manage to convey to Archbishop de Bretoyi? None. I have no connection with the Archbishop. Why would he be interested in a parish priest's help? What about your letter? We have it in our files. You received instruction from the Archbishop. Pope's dog. Behead the traitor. It is a simple letter, not instructions, and it is not from the Archbishop. But from my parish priest in Compan, Jean Arsène Sereto. Where is he now? I know only that he planned to leave for Switzerland. He may have changed his mind. This is why I never thought to respond to the letter. What a coincidence. Archbishop de Bretilleux currently resides in Switzerland. It is indeed a coincidence. Many clergymen reside in Switzerland. Who believes that? Nah, I'm gonna I'm gonna acquit him. And I know the revolutionaries and the common folk, they're gonna hate me for this, but. This man needs to be acquitted. Did the defendant confess to the crime? Kinda yes. I mean, what exactly is the crime here? Just just to get the... Accused of counter-revolution. No, he did not confess to be part of the counter-revolution. But he did confess to staying in Paris despite... Being banned. Choose an order to prepare foreign intervention. I mean, no. What valuables were seized uh, were a golden chalice and reliqui uh, reliquary, I believe. Take a look again. Um, yeah, there you go. Golden chalice and reliqui uh, uh, reliquary. When and where did the defendant corrupt the people of Paris during reading and writing lessons in the orphanage, during arguments with the Café Procopes? We didn't take a look at this. Right now, it's the reading and writing lessons. How much did the defendant earn for his espionage? Oh, they want me to ask that. Oh, no. That means I have to... That means I have to ask the question. We have to... Or, or He's going to go to prison then. What stipend does the accused receive as a teacher? Two francs a week, but most people give me food instead. Bread, butter, sometimes wine. Does it not bother, bother you that poor people have to take food from their child, uh, children to give it to you? Of course it bothers me, but I too have to eat. Keeps gold under his bed and still takes food from the poor. We demand an explanation. Where does the gold come from? Is it not from your fellow conspirators abroad? Of course not. It belongs to the parish in Compon, which is currently under my care. This gold is not my property. I mean, we gotta look him up. For his espionage. What the... What does it... What is it... What? Two phones per week. It's prison. Hmm. I sentence citizen Claude Pochard to prison. Lead the condemned out. He saved that priest. He showed mercy to an enemy of the revolution. He ought to have been killed. I have nothing else to say. 
All of this was correct. Forward a full good job. Thank you very much. Reputation influence up. Unlocking that question was 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 an absolute waste of an evening. Yeah, my family is gonna be mad. My family is going to be very, very mad, I can tell you that already. Without anything else. Uh, I felt pushed to ask the last question, which is just, just strange. I felt pushed to ask it because we needed to answer it. Oh, let's listen to this. Traitor. Hmm. Dark times ahead of us. Dark times ahead of us. One fool spewed out one word too many. The other fired a musket. They fought for freedom. Oh, this is the aftermath it's of the National the Guard. That man. Hard to forget. He asked me if I'd seen his wife. He found his son. The freedom we borrowed from the wealthy and the noble. We believed it was worth the price. He was judged by people long devoid of their freedom. The only things they knew were dust and sweat and anger. Before we go into this, I just want to say by the way, this was actually the first court case where I was kind of unhappy with it because the questionnaire by the prosecutor was so leading that I had to go with that question because I literally couldn't answer it otherwise. And I don't know actually what happens if I uh, go against the prosecutor, but I can only assume that it goes into the ranking for the enemy of the court or enemies at the court, meaning that uh, would essentially be stepped on with, you know, reputation, whatever faults. But let's just take a look at this. Aldrich Fidel, my father. We made a nice profit. There was a chance of prosperity. Why would the Renard family want to take over your shop, Grandpapa? For profit and power. It's always the same and it's no different in these times. The day is about equality, so that's not only the aristocrats can li uh, so that so that not only the aristocrats can live with dignity. Grow up, boy. I only saw the truth uh, truth when they attempted to sentence my son, your uncle, to death. It suddenly dawned on me that the only thing that mattered were the powers only things that mattered were the power I never had and the connections I never cared for. You wanted to be righteous while the injustice spread like a plague. You should not be sorry for that. I am not, but I would rather your brother lived so that I still had two sons. You have a brother, Daddy. Where is he? He died a long time ago, before you were born. Why did he die? No, you never ask those questions. Do not talk so much while eating. Your uncle went to war and died in battle. Your generation will soon realize the extent of the damage we inflicted upon the world. In the past, decent people like Poshar never had to worry about courts or tribunals, but now? Do you even consider the possibility that Poshar was guilty? No, not Mr. Poshar. He was no guiltier than any of us. Son, keep an eye on the Renards. Yeah, he hated that. Our son probably liked it. Oh, he hated it too? What? They all hated it. I thought... Burel and the riot. He signed off on the use of deadly force against protesters. Your family is not all too keen on talking to you tonight. I thought he... I thought he would like that we sentenced him. He's revolutionary. Apparently not. All right. Yeah, they all hate that I signed off on that. Jesus Christ. The kid doesn't understand. Why would he be influenced by that? Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, this, this is a bit of a... Bit of an issue. Uh, 
Bad relationship with the eldest son. <laughs> wow. Jesus Christ. Notebook. Uh, Grace Elliot. Grace Elliot, I guess. A courtesan known in every nook of Paris that is worth mentioning. A lady of leisure born in Scotland. Okay, so Grace Elliot. And living in Paris as an alleged spy for the English. In order to survive, she has been forced to master diplomacy like one of the deputies of the National Convention. There is no doubt that her profession has helped her establish relationships. It is unofficially said that if an arist aristocrat wants to escape from Paris, then Grace Elliot is the one to speak to. Oh, she's involved with the king, isn't she? Bruno Fidel, your older brother. He's absent, yet the very mention of his name shakes the walls of your house. He was the firstborn, your father's pride and joy. He was chosen to inherit your father's business and use it as the foundation on which to expand your family's affluence. His crime changed everything, casting name, casting shame upon the family name. A few years after your father cast him out of your home, you received word that Bruno was killed on the battlefield, his body rotting with the thousands of others who died fighting for their republic's freedom. Ah, oh, this is heavy. What's the hierarchy saying? Oh, Grace Elliot. Interesting. And then we have the Minister of Internal Affairs. I see, I see. So we know his crime. He caused what we saw in the last cutscene. Everybody hates us. We're in trouble. We are in trouble. I don't even know, by the way. It can definitely happen that we just lose the game. That is a thing that does actually happen. Oh god. In the dock, si uh, in the dock sits Mathieu Burel, the former commander-in-chief of the National Guard. The defendant stands accused of causing the death of 34 people who took part in a demonstration against monarchic authority. Around 3 p.m., two spontaneous groups of protesters stumbled upon each other in one of the streets leading to Place Vendôme. A quarrel broke out between the uh, supporters and opponents of Citizen Capet, with both sides engaged in a heated argument. None of the involved parties managed to gain the upper hand, and they quickly resorted to name-calling and public threats. Soon after, a National Guard detachment led by the defendant arrived on the scene. According to the eyewitness testimony of Blaise Fosset, Commander-in-Chief Mathieu Burel stood himself, stood himself between the two groups alone and attempted to talk sense into them. He was quick, uh, quickly shouted down by the protesters. A few of them vocally accused the Commander-in-Chief of violating their freedom of speech. A rock flew over Burel's head. He then walked up to the regiment that until this point had stood away from the crowds. The Commander-in-Chief ordered them to load their muskets and aim at the protesters. He shouted to the mob that they should leave, which, he, which the people of France of course ignored. Then, as Fazette testified, another rock barely missed his head. This time it managed to hit one of the soldiers in the chest, leaving him breathless for a moment. Burel ordered the troops to fire. Bullets reached 34 people in total on both sides of the protests. During his arrest, Burel tried to explain that he had the tribunal's opinion, which stated he could use force if needed. He tried to defend himself with similar opinions from the convention. Prosecutor Tinville did not care for such explanations, and his fury speech convinced the deputies to dismiss him. Now he's trying to convince the judge to impose an additional punishment. I'll be honest with you. We did sign off on that. I do not regret signing off on that. Now, the family does not agree that we signed off on that. I do. I think it was necessary, in theory. But in practice, as it stands, one rock over his head, one rock on a chest of a soldier that left him breathless, as he says, which almost is too much cynicism for me to handle. I believe he misjudged everything here. I think he made a huge mistake and he has to suffer the consequences of it. Now my main issue is that if I do the death penalty we drop down here. I don't know what it means though. I don't know if I will die after this. But maybe you're gonna use a guillotine for the first time. Let's unlock some questions here. Causing death, protesters, um, is a cause of defense. Oh, come on, that's a trap. The crowd's fervor is uh, freedom of speech. Injured soldier is the defense. What? This is... This is the defense. Oh god, this is terrible. The commander achieves this missile. This is actually awful. Um, the accusation is causing death. He's reckless, which uh, is his personality. Freedom of speech. 
order to load muskets as course of events. The commander in chief's dismissal. Injured soldier is. Extenuating circumstances? Yeah, okay, okay. The recklessness. Freedom of speech. It's either accusation or cause of events. The commander in chief's dismissal. Oh god, I, this was a terrible start. The commander in chief's dismissal is a uh, cause of events. Quite clearly. The commander in chief's recklessness is either. It, it gotta be accusation. Freedom of speech. The crowd's fervor. Extenuating circumstances, quite clearly. And this one is accusation. Alright, oh, we still got him. Let's go. Alright, let's take a look at this. The defendant may introduce himself. We all know who the villain is. Mathieu Burel, Commander-in-Chief of the National Guard and... Shut up already! Let us proceed directly to the testimony. Wait, who's the witness? Is that the soldier, maybe? Hmm... An official document issued by. What are the questions here? Did the defendant confess to the crime? Which was the. What was the reason for the commander's resignation? Is the defendant a monarchist? Hmm. What was the reason for the commander's resignation? Were you given a reason for your dismissal? Multiple reasons. I will not address all of them, but the one that wounded me the most was my supposed incompetence. He caused the death of. Many people have died during the revolution, and yet the murderers are members of the convention, or judges of the tribunals. The accused should choose his words more carefully. That is slender, a tool of the monarchist machine. Spare me your speeches. If you had any decency left in you, you would remain silent. If we let you go, would you go back to your duty? No. Now I can see that being a scapegoat is the best I could have hoped for here. A deputy or a judge make a mistake, so they convict a soldier. That is how it has always been and how it will always be. Let's be out a politician. <laughs> Is the condemned aware of the severity of the charges? You understand that 34 civilians were called. Uh, killed? God, were killed. Citizens were killed. Sure. Those that were killed were aggressors who dared to attack a soldier. All 34 of them. No, he was hit by a rock thrown by a single person. But before that, another rock flew over my head. I had reason to believe that the mob would become violent. But that's exactly why I was sent there, to prevent violence. And I did. Several people died, but the rest of the citizens are safe. This Commander-in-Chief is a real piece of work. He truly is. He's not Commander-in-Chief anymore. Still a bastard, though. Why do the citizens stand between the fighting groups? I know for a fact that you can decrease tension with reason and medi uh, mediation of a third party. I was not involved with either of the groups. Wait, do you mean to say you are not a supporter of the revolution? During these events, I was a soldier and an officer first and foremost. I could not allow myself the comfort of having political views. Why? The security of the people was the most important thing. Citizens from surrounding houses first, protesters second. Since we are far beyond these events, I take this lack of a clear answer as evidence of your support for the monarchy. I have always rem remained loyal to France and her people. <laughs> um, let's talk about the witness. Please introduce yourself. Blaise Fosset, Monsieur Le Juge, I am a simple blacksmith. Citizen, do you confirm being a witness of the events that are the cause of, your gather of our gathering today? Yes, I was a witness. I mean, I was there. I saw everything and I want to talk about it. I really do. Please tell us if you saw exactly how, uh, how the accused acted. Yes, of course. That's why I'm here. I saw the captain. He's a captain, right? Go on. He stood between the people and started yelling at them. If someone came up to him, he pushed him away and made threats, shaking his fist. But I think he meant well. Why do you think that? I don't know. Just a feeling I had. Hmm. What did the accused do when the first bodies fell? Oh, he wasn't very nice. Not nice at all. And he'd be a bit more precise told his people to leave and then spat in the direction of the crowd and the body's there. Oh, boy. Why'd you do that? Do you see yourself as a reckless commander? No, I think I'm calm most of the time. It comes with age and experience. Yet you stood between two hostile groups without any guards. 
that indicates something quite different. That is called bravery. I will not send a regular soldier. I risk my own life and also hope that seeing a high-ranking officer would make them come to their senses. So it did not work. No, had the opposite effect. There's no way I could have expected the outcome. But you were there expect... But you were there to expect exactly such an outcome. Did he confess to the crime? I mean, what exactly is the crime here? Causing death of 34 people? I mean, that's a yes. Hmm. Incompetence? Did not make a specific request? The defendant confessed to the crime. I mean, yes? I want to sentence him. Look. No matter what these... Here's my point of view. No matter what these views are, he's not an enemy to the revolution. Which is also why it makes sense that the revolutionaries are in imprisonment and not in the execution. But the thing is, while he's not an enemy of the revolution, he grossly misjudged his position so much so that he caused the death of 34 people. Over one rock thrown at a person, one rock thrown over his head. That is not enough to shoot into a crowd of 34 people. But you know what? I do want to learn... I want to learn this one thing. What did he actually say to the crowd? Wait, what? We're given official documents issued by... Monsieur Le Juge, may I interrupt? That line of defense is pure nonsense. Why is that? I brought the document myself to be signed by the judge. Oh, right. He signed it. He gave him the right to use force in the case of immediate danger from the protesters. You killed 34 people. Would you rather there were hundreds of dead soldiers and protesters with the rest of them still fighting each other? I had good reason to use force, and the fact that I am standing here accused only confirms that the judge present here, the deputies of the convention, are merely looking for a scapegoat. Nonsense, the convention would never. Here is the document signed by Judge Alexi uh, Alexis Fidel and the head of the tribunal, Raymond Devoyer. Two judges confirmed my right to use weapons. It was a recommendation for the convention, so they could write up such law. And I recommend, then, uh, recommend that you release me and sentence those judges to death instead. He's right, you know. No. He's going. He's going. I don't care what this is, okay? I mean, I do care a lot, actually, but... Let's hope that I don't get beheaded by the revolutionaries immediately for getting rid of the leader of the National Guard here. I hereby sentence Mathieu Burel to death by guillotine. The souls of the victims may now rest in peace. Let him share the fate of those he shot. Oh, really? I mean, he did confess to it, I'll be honest with you. In my opinion. Oh, so literally nothing happens if you get one wrong? I didn't... I didn't have to sentence him. Alright, whatever. I didn't have to sentence him. The tutor, that is. Alright. What's this? Burel is gone. <laughs> well, well, well. Urel is indeed gone. Oh my. Maybe I could win the heart of the crowd. What is this? Guillotine. Earn the favor of the crowd by delivering a speech or proceed directly to the execution. Remember, once you start your speech, there's no going back. An awkward or clumsy speech will earn you nothing but ridicule from the audience. Depending on your reputation, the crowd will be more or less aggressive. They're doubtful. Why would I speak to them? You know what, let's speak to them, I guess. They're quite calm anyway, it appears, so we can take a look at this. Strategy building. Before attempting persuasion, you may explore different approaches to all the topics of the, of the conversation. After employing every kind of emotion, you will receive an evaluation of your choices. Characters' attitudes. Each attitude comes with a set of emotions that can have a positive and negative impact. Learn their effects to manipulate the people of Paris in any way you please. The higher your reputation, the more you know about the other speaker's attitudes. You can also obtain this information by spending influence points. Oh boy. Withdrawn. What does that mean? You kind of don't want to talk about it, so maybe humility is good? Okay, I'm going to unlock this real quick. Carefree. What the fuck does that mean? The crowd feels about the defendant carefree, so they are okay with this. I'm gonna be aggressive? 
attached. Yeah, they were, they're extremely sad about the crime. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be very, uh, what? This mini game confuses me. Withdrawn. Maybe we talk about manipulation here. Oh, only one was right, I see. A very weak argument, a weak argument, Jesus, fuck. Alright, so carefree, you never want to use aggression. Attached, you don't want to use humility. And manipulation is good for withdrawn. Oh, this is terrible. Alright. Talking about the crime now, it appears. Um. Oh, wait a minute, I see, I see. I, w I want to choose aggression. Where there's, so this was just a test run, and now we do the actual decisions. Where there's crime, there must be punishment, and we shall dish it out, oh yes. Even the convict's ancestors shall feel the cold edge of the guillotine slicing through their necks. Oh, they hated that. The defendant. Um, today we have a convict who, as they all say, is innocent. What? And then manipulation. We are not worthy of that freedom if we let the old system and rotten morality poison our country. What a weird speech. Proud, doubtful. <laughs> Amazing. Questionable success. Your scapegoat will die so that you can walk free. I wonder if your conscience will let you sleep at night. Well, let's find out. Pull the rope. There he goes. First execution. I get the argument now. I get the argument stuff. The, the first is just a trial. Everything after is, is different. He's ours. There can be no more demeaning experience for revolutionary past than the escape of citizen Capé, the king. He escaped, slipped right from their hands, and the revolution now seems feeble and weak. The people resemble a child that could easily be duped by, by anyone. However, the Republic quickly composed itself thanks to a postmaster and his people who were able to catch the fugitives escaping to mont -Midi. Ordinary citizens led to the fall of a monarch. You will have a chance to serve the Republic as well, for citizen Capet will face the tribunal tomorrow. You will choose how he will be remembered. As a traitor and a coward, or as an unlucky statesman. If it were for the prison guards to decide, there would be only one outcome. Hmm. Let's, let's say, leave him alone. He's gonna stand trial. Alright, okay. Oh, a son kind of liked it. Okay. Uh, you have to choose an action. Hmm. Opening night of the theater. There is a new play opening uh, tonight on the stage of the Comédie Française. It is a good chance to take a breather from reality. Does maybe everybody like that? Reading together again will impact him negatively. Evening gambling, absolutely not. Everybody will hate that. Evening stroll. He will like it, he will... Somebody will probably dislike it. I need to get Bernard. Then again, if we just bring him up, maybe he will influence everybody to be positive here. Maybe let's do some... But then he goes even further down, Jesus. Let's just go to the opening night at the theater. Oh, he hated it. Oh, they all hated it. Wait, he liked it. Oh, he's normal now. Nice. What about him? Ah, oh, he hated it. That's fine. The revolutionaries no longer hate us, which is nice. Nice that it shows you um, how much they like or dislike it. That's quite decent. Are they... Oh, what is this? We now have a crowd to deal with? Alright, I just want to take a look here. Poor Papa. Monsieur Pochard et moi. <laughs> Sorry about that, mate. Oh, the revolutionaries hate me. Oh, boy. All right, I will see you in the next episode. For now, see you later, alligator. Wow, what a trial this will be. I am actually scared. <laughs>